Ezekiel, can these bones live again? God is essentially saying to Ezekiel, what do you believe? How much faith do you have? Who will determine your narrative? Can these bones live again? And Ezekiel ponders. Can something be too far gone? Is it too late? In the context of constant warfare, hunger, and death in Ezekiel's landscape, he ponders if the people can be restored if they can know healing. Friends, this is our story, is it not? Is it not? We look at our own landscape and ponder God's question as well. As the world tumbles into relentless war and economic chaos, and the ice caps melt, and the false conspiratorial propaganda of replacement theory fuels white supremacist violence, and our politics become even more divisive and dysfunctional, and our civil, reproductive, and voting rights are being rolled back, we ponder if the people and nations can be restored, if we can know healing, if a future with hope is possible, if the dry bones can live again. And as the church tumbles into depression or institutional preservation or blissful cultural and theological isolation, and our positions become frozen in yet more divisive and harmful rhetoric and accusations of blame. And our connection splinters. God's question to Ezekiel echoes in our hearts and in our heads. Can these bones live again? Is everything too far gone? Is it too late for us? Are the bones too dry, too broken, too trampled upon? How do we press on? How do we press on when we are overwhelmed by disaffiliation and souls are parched and we are so very, very tired? I think God had Ezekiel right where God wanted him after showing him the desolation of the valley filled with dry bones. Mm -hmm. And I believe God has every one of us and all who may be listening in today right where God wants us. The Western writer Louise Lamour could occasionally drop a memorable line and I quote from him, there will come a time when you believe everything is finished. That's just the beginning. Mm -hmm. End of quote. This was true for the disciples immediately after Jesus' death, huddled together in the same small room where they had last dined with Jesus. All was lost. It was over. It was too late. But God had the disciples right where God wanted them. This was the inflection point on which the gospel narrative would hang. Without the darkness of the tomb, the disciples would never really understand the resurrection and the mission of offering an offering abundant life that Jesus had given them. They would have continued to envision the kingdom of God as triumphant rather than subversive. The love of God is selective rather than universal. Servanthood is painless rather than as incarnational. You see, the first question for any of us called to lead in these uncertain and unprecedented times is this. Is it possible? God has us right where God wants us to be. Mm 